Well, um, good afternoon and welcome to today's installment of the Boost Your Skills webinar series, where we enlist the advice of specialist experts in order to help you make the most out of your university experience and to acquire the skills to help you succeed and develop both professionally and on a personal level. I'm Siddharth and joining me today is Jenny and we are your Boost Your Skills team. This event is in a webinar format, so you won't be able to turn on your cameras and mics, but we would still love to hear from you through the chat function. This is a safe space with no judgments being passed, so please feel free to ask any questions without fear or worry. If you are still anxious, feel free to message Jenny or myself anonymously and we will pass it on. This webinar will consist of a short focus exercise, 45 minute session, followed by some time for questions and answers. If you have any questions, please send them into the chat box and we will attempt to get through all of them. This event is also being live streamed to our YouTube channel, so don't worry if you've missed something. We will be sharing a link to the video and the slides after the event. And finally, a huge thank you to all our attendees who have pre-submitted questions. So without any further delay, I'd like to hand over to Maria from Sage. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. My name is Mario Menanio, and I'm Marketing Manager for Study Skills at, at Sage Publishing. I'm really delighted to introduce you today to our author, Julian Edwards. Julian is a lecturer in academic skills at the University of Portsmouth. He has worked as a journalist, teacher, and university lecturer in his career to date. Can we go to the next slide, please? Brilliant, thank you. So today's webinar will bring to life tried and tested tips from Julian's upcoming book, Write, Reflect Write Reflectively, which is part of a super quick skills series and comes out in January. The book will help you build reflective learning and writing skills step by step. To learn more about Write Ref Reflectively, get your copy at a discounted price and get your copy at a discounted price. Just scan the QR code. And that's all from me. Now over to you, Julian. Hello, nice to meet you today. I um, hope you're all comfortable where you are. And um, it's good to um, see that so many people have signed up and, and asked some questions already, which is brilliant. Uh, somebody's asked a question that I noticed um, saying, why do people struggle with reflection, almost fearing it as a skill? Somebody wrote that in. Um, uh, and that's a really good question. You know, so there's a bit of fear in, in writing reflectively or reflecting. And I think making mistakes is something we're all a bit um, worried about in our lives um you know we, nobody wants to relive a, a trauma or a difficult thing and i suppose that can be part of writing reflectively oh you can be writing about um good spaces and nice places i think that's possible as well but um we're looking at experiential learning and a place where making mistakes is allowed um how many mistakes you make might depend on your tutor so that's a possibility to think about but um I'm not encouraging you to make mistakes, but I'm just saying writing about mistakes is a good thing to, to consider. And but who wants to make mistakes? It's a fear. I might be I might be making a mistake when I'm writing an academic assignment as well. So there's a lot of there is a bit of fear there. But I'm, my my aim is to sort of try and take away the fear and try and give you the the basic uh, sort of bare bones of what you'd have to do to, to um, uh, you know, uh, to 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 write an academic um reflective assignment um you know i'm not going into self-examination or or exposing our weaknesses or frailties to other people you don't really have to do that when you're writing reflectively um you can keep those to yourself but you know you do have to perhaps be honest and and write about things that you could develop as a lifelong learning skill for ever well, as far as well you go and um well, uh, it depends how you think. Could be fraternity, of course. But um, so, it, it, so we're combining sort of um, some of these new academic skills with with the old thoughts, perhaps the old American self help tradition of thinking and helping yourself. And you can, you know, you've got this space and the opportunity to write an academic essay and, and explore some of the concepts, theories, themes, and really generic themes that are out there. So you could say it's a bit of a subject, really. Um, you know, to write reflectively if you're going to go to generic themes. So we're looking at that today and thinking how, um, I suppose I'm saying this book can help you give, give, give structure and things like that to what you're, you're writing. 
Um, but yeah, um, what sort of things could be difficult when you're, you know, writing reflectively is what we're going to try and look at today. Um, and we're going to try and look at that sort of question there. Um, it's something you can answer in the chat as I'm, um, as I say, blathering away, but I am talking quite a lot. So today, so um, while, while I'm suggesting some things as well, you could think about that um, in terms of we're asked a lot to, or you are asked a lot to do a lot when you're writing reflectively or if you're setting an, a reflective assignment, you'd be writing to, you know, to, to, to express yourself, perhaps. Um, you might be um, narrative writing, writing a story, um, not a Hollywood story necessarily, but, uh, you know, a story about yourself. So analytically, you might have to um, look at different difficulties in an organisation or yourself um, or your own actions um, and your own behaviour. And that's entirely your choice. So usually you're, you're given a very open book with a lot of themes possibility to, to, to write about and also often to come up with a with a way out of um this sort of obstacle you found in a in a learning experience so um it's it's going to be tricky um with citation with structure um you're defining a problem suggesting a solution sometimes um showing subject knowledge uh, as well and um, and uh, applying learning outcomes to what you're doing from the course perhaps as well so you can see it's it's a lot to do and um and are you you know are you supposed to be re reflexive thinking again which is an another thing in terms of your influences and why you're writing this um usually you don't have to do that so much but it's possible that you 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 might be asked to you know say what sort of stance you're coming from though that that might be going a bit more deeply so um some reflection um these does need to be validated that you're making when you're writing um and and how you validate it is something that this book looks at um and you know in the traditional academic ways really so in some ways it's not that uh, i'm saying it's not a lot different um in structure perhaps than an academic assignment but you're able to write your own title and you can place yourself in the middle of it. And it can be a life learning, lifelong learning, experiential um, path that you can take on this, um, either, as I say, um, academically, professionally or personally. So um, those are some of the things I'm thinking about. And I, I just don't know if you if, if, if you've written anything in the chat, but um, we can have it. Oh, we've got 58 chats there already. Fifty nine. There's quite a few. So um, is there any sort of salient questions that or some not like some good questions that anybody's got? Yeah, so there's um, lots of things that um, people find difficult. So <laughs> I'll just read out a few of them. Um, so um, I think there's a lot of, sort of um, themes along the using I instead of we or, or I instead of so as a first person. That's not something that people are used to. Um, yeah, also, yeah. Ensuring that actions and improvements can connect with theories. That's what one person put. Someone else put that they weren't sure on the structure. And um, let's see, uh, how do you combine, combine critical analysis and reflective writing? That's a good question. Um, what else have we got? It is an art that our learners slowly make progression to, relevant to health, social care and social work learners in particular what someone's popped so yeah there's um, lots of people um commenting yeah i think um, i think i think i have to say this well the, the the what i've tried to write answers all of those questions but I, um no what i would say is uh, it, it does depend on your tutor um you have to always check with the tutor that's what's written, uh, covered a bit in the book as well in terms of i and we and, and you and, and and writing like that um but yeah, um, so so structure is also um, something that I think ap uh, definitely applies, uh, and that's also suggested in the book. The different structures um, based, you know, uh, largely on on academic, um, you know, assignments. So so um, 
it is following that academic route of yes you are going to have to put some citation in and you have to um validate you know your take on either your experience or um and so not every tutor asks that and not every work situation asks that either when you're when you're working writing reflectively but i'm just covering all the all the um situations really that i can that, that i'm just making sure that it's uh it's a um the op the opportunity to do well is covered really yeah so um so we're, we're thinking then you know what a general discussion i suppose what um do you want to write about in terms of general discussion um you know you have the opportunity uh depending on the assignment uh to look at work or academic role or task and very much in the case of a work practice gap for example where you find things that aren't necessarily happening at work or at possibly in the educational establishment you're in and you'd like and you think well you know it's either legislation policy or guidelines perhaps not missing so there's plenty to write about and usually uh your your supervisor or tutor is very happy for you to to exploit that um opportunity to to look at uh, um something that's not going quite well because let's face it you know and so you know and, and and if you can get personal skills development as part of that um uh, you and uh, if you can get the right theme as i say there's a generic theme there's a possibility uh which could cover all those organizational or academic growth can can develop as well so the possibilities um to write something that can change things i mean obviously that's one of the themes and ways that at universities work is that they're you know solving uh analyzing um looking at problems um they're not necessarily always the case it might be moving back towards more of a theoretical look at things as well so you could place yourself if you haven't got experience of something in a, in a theoretical role and how that can develop to to improve either yourself or a situation but yeah linking somebody was saying there as i say um jenny was saying there that somebody was writing about linking theory or linking analysis to to uh a reflection and, and that would be key you know in 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 the start of any assignment really is to is to look at the theory even at, even evaluate the theory but look at the theory and see if it's it's possible for you to 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 grow and develop on a theoretical basis before applying it to to solve a subject problem that well quite frankly might be quite difficult anyway if you don't know the subject that well so the possibilities there for writing a lot uh, i think so um so that's a general discussion of we might come back to the chats in a minute but we have got a poll i think coming up next so you're welcome to um try a poll there what's the most important um i feel like the development in or let's see yeah so we've got what is the most important i'm um, sorry i've got I'll start again from that one. What is the most important development area in reflective writing? And your choices are academic, professional, personal. So how, how are we doing, Siddharth? Well, it's quite evenly uh, mixed out at the moment. We've got 38 percentage for academic and about 39 to 40 for personal. The lowest one is professional, which is at about 25, 26%. But Okay, so how, how many people have voted? Do you think everyone has? We, well, we've got, yeah, we've got about 108 votes so far, but it is okay. going, we can, we'll leave it on so, for another 10 seconds. Yeah, and then we can share time. the results so everyone can see them. Absolutely, yeah, just a couple more seconds. And, brilliant. And so here are the results. So we've got 36% for academic, 23% for professional and 41% for personal. There you go, Julian. Well, yeah, if I'm if I'm quantifying thing things, if I'm trying to make things finite uh, and look at things generally in a uh, you know from a variable point of view. Anyway, I'm saying that that looks like it would be great if you could get a theme for all of them in your assignment because um, you've got academic, professional, personal. They're all pretty much even there so um yeah uh there is possible i'm suggesting to 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 cover all cover all those things in it with 
you know, time and 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 thinking about a theme. So um, yeah, uh, meta learning. We'll have we can uh, that's what's covered and things like that. Um, developing your your learning styles and techniques, and but you know that can cover that can move into the prof professional sphere. Um, and I'm saying something like critical thinking skills could cover that as well as your you know it, as well as the personal development. So it's not all about um anger management or emotional control or something like that although that that could easily cover all three of them but i think they're equally important um uh, 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 by the look look looking there i think so that's that's really interesting so that's that's a good piece of uh information there thanks very much for for voting there appreciate that um so we'll just move on then uh if i can um so we'll move on to the next slide then i think yeah, I'll try and do that. I, I'm not being able to move on at the moment. If Maybe you click it's... back onto the slide, you should be able to. Oh, click back on the slide. Okay. 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 So, um, I'm finding out from you then. Uh, we just got a bit of information back from you, but um, what I'm interested in doing perhaps today is walking up the ladder of inference. Uh, well, uh, what I mean is by that is um, seeing what assumptions you have on writing reflectively or, or what realities as well you have on writing re uh, reflectively in terms of what do you have to cover in reflective assignments. And um, I, I would expect this to be quite a general and um, extensive sort of area because you could be writing about going into a, a public space and suggesting what could be improved in it and how you feel about reflective space in, in some subjects. In others, you might be asked um, for, you know, something quite term, in terms of professional development, evidence-based practice sort of um, assignment, really. So I am covering evidence-based practice assignments in the book and, and looking at a little bit at, um, at the sort of reflexive or influence side of reflective writing as well but um that's a question for you to write in the chat there what what do you have to cover in a reflective assignment what kind of things are yeah it might be difficult again but what what that's what sort of subject areas i suppose um that you're asked to to look at and and are you are you asked to you know to express um personal pers personal development as well more than more than academic or more than you know more than professional so that's that's um something as well but what sort of subjects are you looking at and even what sort of themes which is what we might come on to so so that's something for the chat there um, oh, um sorry we've got a few already actually Julia. Right, okay. I'll I'll a couple of them out, so. yeah great so um a few of them all say about personal and professional development um there's a bit on critical analysis application of theory uh career development um present and future learning and the thoughts and feelings that come with it uh, quite a bit on critical analysis critical writing or critical reflection um, but yeah, most of them seem to be both professional and personal. So it seems to be a good mix of both at the moment. Um, yeah, most of them are critical analysis and exploring what's happened and why they've happened. So quite a few of those answers that are on the same kind of vein. Oh, thanks very much, Siddharth. That's great. So let's carry on then. Um, and we've got a, a poll there. Um, and what do you think is the most important element in a reflective assignment? So we've got a poll there to have a look at again, uh, to vote on. Okay, so the choices are use of citation, analytical writing, personal feelings and values, use of theory, evaluative writing, honesty and writing and arguments. So how, how are we doing, Siddharth? Is this one taking a little bit longer? Are people uh, a little bit. More? We do have a couple of front runners. The main one is analytical writing, which is sitting at 31% at the moment. Um, and then the next one is evaluative writing with 25, 26%. And the rest of them, well, personal feelings and values is up there as well, about 18 odd percent. And then the rest are all relatively even. So I'll, I'll leave it on for another 10, 15 seconds, just give everyone else a chance to answer it. But yeah, it looks like analytical and evaluative writing are the two front runners at the moment. 
that if anyone can't vote on the polls for any reason, if you want to pop it in the chat, then we will count that as well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm uh, going to end the poll now. So here we go and hear the results. Um, yeah, so we've got 2% for use of citation, 35% for analytical writing, 20% uh, for personal feelings and values, 6% uh, for use of theory, 24% for evaluative writing, 8% uh, for honesty, and 6% for writing an argument. Okay, well, I guess so uh, analytical writing and evaluative writing look like the, the leaders there, and, and I'm, I'm glad to say that that's covered uh, in the um, book quite extensively, so I'm pleased about that. Um, use of citation, I I thought I would think that you'd have to put more citation in an assignment. Um, that's one thing that's also covered in the book, how you might do that. Um, and the use of theory. Um, I th it's just a natural to, to have some sort of theoretical framework in, in an assignment. I know the assignments are, are short, and they might only be 1,500 words or, or less. Um, but somehow, sometimes I think tutors are, are want that sort of uh, a smattering of something analytical or evaluative in it and a citation. So, um, and honesty is, yeah, I mean, obviously you don't have to, as I say before, the fear of showing people your deepest innermost feelings, but um, showing that you've made it, usually that you've made a, an error or not made an error necessary but you've um, experienced um, a difficulty and that you'd like to overcome that in the future and and how you'd write that in into the into the um uh, equation if you like is a uh, way well, into the equation of your life really i suppose would be would be quite uh, an essential part of it or and writing an argument, um, I see that as part of um, certainly evaluative writing or analytical writing. So, so that that sort of could be added almost there. So, I suppose it's you know the typical question, which is the most important. And I say, well, they're all important. Um, but I agree that in an assignment, which would you most put most preference on? And I think I think that's probably you know good representation. So, thanks very much for that. That's a nice reaction. We had a question from a, um, someone that I thought I'd just chuck in at this point, Julian. Um, that someone's asked, how is evaluative different to analytical writing? So I thought that would be a good one to ask now, given the poll. Yeah, we are we, we are going to move on to that. And I oh, will, great. In my, in, my, in, my, in my, yeah, we are going, we are, we are moving on to that. There's, I've got, I've just got two, because, you know, I've got two simple um, ways of looking at evaluative writing and, analytical writing so you know analytical writing i'm suggesting is um developing uh well you can have an analytical and evaluative writing in, in the same sort of problem solving uh, problem discussing problem defining area i would say that in an assignment that's true but um i'm saying it's it's the it's the it's the context props of your learning environment and and you're analyzing with some citation uh you know what is the particular definition of the difficulty uh that you're um you experience so you're you you're making valid your the trickiness of your experience and with evaluative writing we're also suggesting that that is probably the movement uh the definition and and testing testing really um how you think you could move forward in the future into a, a, a similar learning environment uh, learning experience or a um you know what what you've learned what you can gain from that how you've you know you studied up a bit on it and you tested the thought the the ideas on what you would do differently and that's so that you know ideally could work professionally academically and personally and so we're looking at those themes that will cover that later on um, but yeah I, I i have got some examples of that in on the slides and if you can um, bear with me, then I would read them for you. Um, so that's the possibility. Um, but um, so that, that's what we're looking at today. Um, so uh, I'll just move on then to the next slides. Um, so I'm saying, um, you know, a, a reflective assignment, um, you can 
depending on the tutor, end up with a, uh, the setting the assignment or expecting in the assignment, um, uh, an expecting tutor, uh, the kitchen sink. Um, the absolute, you know, the, a good butler-sized, uh, butler-type sink, I suppose, and well, or Belfast sink is maybe what I'm thinking of, something that's heavy, um, quite well enameled, and, um, you know, has been launched towards your direction. So it's quite a, a thing to deal with if, you know, it's not, you know, presented lightly to you and ex and, and maybe some light things or it's, it's maybe it's presented lightly to you as as a as a as a, as a plastic bowl but it might end up as a, as a large enamel belfast sink and that's the possibility that you might be facing sometimes and that's what i'm suggesting um in terms of being ready for that um but um yeah uh, you could be you have to do you have to may, maybe academic personal professional or together um development um it's either could be either one of those you could obviously choose one of those but um evidence-based practice so you're looking for analysis and evaluation in that to come up with a, a solution to a difficulty or a learning experience or a workplace practice gap now i'm saying all that's possible in, in some assignments and that's really what inspired me to uh, write the book i suppose really is that that i was finding students with this um you know top heavy sort of thing to deal with and um, similarly, on the opposite side, I would say there is an opposite. Uh, differences always help us describe things and, and define things. If I'm a, if many nurses, for example, in work in practice, they only reflect and they only write about what they've been doing that day. However, that does that does have to pertain to their working rules and guidelines, but it may not actually be cited or anything like that but i'm suggesting that in in the academic situation that you might have to do a lot of things um at once um as well as you know say the narrative writing we could put in there so it's it's a, it's a tricky thing and um you know finding out what your tutor requires uh, and wants is 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 going to be quite quite key to the situation and that's always going to be the key to the situation i suppose so so that's something to think about um so, you know, you, you might uh, follow a cycle in your writing um, when you're writing something. Where did the critical incident take place? Um, uh, what's the difference between what I wanted to happen and what actually happened? You know, that that discrepancy. And um, I, I, I touch on that, on that, you know, the feeling of a mistake, perhaps even the feeling of regret. I do touch on that. I, I do think that's a good motivation. Um, you know, you don't have to ruminate. Um, you don't have to worry excessively about making difficulties for yourself or for others or, or, or the mistakes that you're involved in. But you can move on from them, learn from those. You know, this is you know the experiential sort of side of many writers, um, such as Rogers or someone like that. And, and we're developing a, you know, what you know, what did I did I feel about the situation? Is it the, so the feelings, situating your feelings in in the in um yourself uh but you know that's a possibility of, say uh not maybe not so it's a you know more of a sort of um 1970s sort of possible situation how you feel about yourself how you feel about yourself but how do you feel about the situation and applying that you know those that motivation or that that even conscience can sit with you uh to what am i going to do about it then or what can I do about it? You know, what sort of intervention perhaps is a possibility? But on a simple level, um, it could be much, much, much simpler than that. And um, but still, ne ne nevertheless, you'd need an analysis, evaluation, um, and you know, a touch of theory to to move to what I would do better next time. So we're essentially, you know, in in the Edwards Deming's. Um, industrial psychology model which probably in itself developed from play writers like Dewey and really furthermore from the American self-help sort of idea and um, obviously Kolb and people have taken taken that on I believe and, and moved that into a an area of um you know I won't, I won't say product production improvement but certainly you know you can you can you can you can you can do better if you want to and so 
pulling yourself up by bootstraps may be, but you're 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 developing your uh, assignment. So this is this is what I think the reflective model and the reflective models show. But they do allow, you know, Gibbs does allow the possibility for feeling, and um, so um, thinking about things and not overly, but developing possibilities um, for future action. Um, and as I say, in that, you know, everybody likes a diary. I suppose that's what might be fearful uh, for people. You know, do I keep a diary? Uh, do I want to show my innermost feelings, my diary to someone else? No, you don't have to do that. But it, it could be useful for developing your ideas and your um, feelings. So I'll maybe answer the question, but there's a question that you can think about. Um, and another question I've got is, do any of you use a, a, a learner journal in your, um, well, reflective writing? So I'm saying, do you use a learner journal in your reflective writing? And um, why might that be useful? So I'm just uh, asking that as a general question. We've uh, we already got a few people that say yes, and um, we've got one person saying that it helps to remember the details of incidents. Um, we've had people that use it in, when they were doing their doctorate. Um, it enables you to remember what you read. Um, I think the detail part is very interesting because I, I did that when I was writing my dissertation. I, I used to feel like if I come across something that might help, just kind of chuck it in there somewhere, and then at least you remember that you made that point, otherwise it's, it's gone. Um, we've got an academic here who says, I certainly do. Um, yeah, it seems like overwhelmingly most people tend to use a, a learner's journal here for some reason or another. Helps in referencing, uh, helps in reflective writing and helping to focus. So, yeah. Great. I, I think that it could be useful for just remembering what happened as well in an experience, a learning experience um, that you were involved in at work or uh, in college and and how you felt you can write that that down and um it's good for just rem just remembering an incident an incident um as i say it could be a critical incident um to do with human factors um which you could obviously write about but um it could be it could be something you know much less than that but it just gives you the a memory and as I say when you're writing reflectively often you have to write in a narrative form and so you might want to relay what happened in that narrative um historically so um there is possibly I think someone did did write did ask a question of that do I have to write chronolog chronologically or uh, about what happened in it as I was right as and I think there is a place for that definitely for for re retelling uh, an experience or or a development um and um so yeah that's that would be that's the uh, the possibility that you can um get involved with it is keep learning and so there's there's a, a, a template of that in the book as well so um that's possible so great so um yeah it might be good to um keep a a, a record of where you felt before um, what actually happened, um, your feelings about it, um, your reflective feelings about it, which you want, might want to link to to so, a sort of a theory, perhaps a theoretical evaluation or ideas of other writers, and then your action for change. So, so that would give you that kind of feeling. So, um, well, I think that was the one we were asking we were asking earlier on. Um, have you used the first person in your reflective assignment? What other kind of language could you use? Um, that's another possibility to, to think about. I think we were saying um, uh, earlier on then about um, the first person, and that, yeah, it's it's to, some some tutors or some subject tutors want you to use um, first person. Others others want you to keep it objective. That's that's usually you know written up there, um, and they might you know they might write that they should write that perhaps in the assignment rubric with whether they want first person or not and so things even i you know i have seen personal development um 
plans made for say nurses or, or other stuff and i have or or um, different type of students and i have seen those um from universities where um the the first person has it's been asked not to use it and quite so so um that's always worth checking um but generally yeah i suppose you you would do that and and the language would change um you know to thought believed um consider um considered so thought you know belief beliefs thoughts and what you value they they could definitely come into that uh first person whereas yeah you might not use those sort of um verbs if you're um writing uh, uh from from an author's point of view you know smith values and yeah you could use it i suppose but but so you're your the author your you know your reporting um so it is a good op opportunity to to write um i think it i personally think it comes from comes from new journalism to a lot to a large extent or perhaps just the old academic an old academic tradition of of going out and finding out what's happening in the world and coming back and writing about it from the first person so the opportunities um it does come from that aspect as well i think so, I think most people are saying that they're using the first person, but um, one person said that they have used it before, but they found that the passive voice is better for reflective writing for them. So oh, that's right. interesting. Um, and some people have said that they can use a mix of first person and other, but majority of people have said that they've used first person before, that they do use it. Great. OK. Thanks very much. So um, just going back to the, the general thoughts and, and ideas about um, how you might develop a theme, how that might come about. Um, I'm saying it could, you know, our motivations come from who we are and how we feel about things. I think that's a, that's a um, and I think writing is a good, good, uh, that's a good place to start from when you're writing um in an academic sense you might have to link that your idea your feeling um you know you might have to link that with a theory and the academic and professional outcomes um of a course as well that you're doing uh, when you're writing so so i becomes you know sort of more sort of us i suppose um and what what people are wanting to achieve uh either in in an organization uh, as well as as personally so it's it becomes quite a um a good subject really um for you know uh developing society generally hopefully so so that's the that's the, so that's what that represents there um just a general question for discussion i suppose is how do you think your initial insights ideas and feelings would change as you research so you might have your initial ideas and thoughts and um i mean that would be a good one for a chat as well but um just thinking you know you might start off with a particularly strong idea or feeling or something that challenges your values and yeah that's a great place to start writing out freely for five minutes or so to get the thoughts out there um and that, and then allowing that to a th to theories looking at theories perhaps for a bit and then writing again and and you might uh, you know benefited from some sort of theoretical values of other writers you might then come to a different opinion on or different certainly words and phrases as to what you're going to write about so you're linking your your ideas and to theories um perhaps or ideas of values and, and your your yeah you're finding your idea might change your your view on things might change what other people are doing in the situation how you how how you're being influenced by um by other people in the situation that that might change uh, might be informed um as i say as you go along by by other um aspects so you know the feeling isn't something to, these, these aren't things to throw away this is just this is a path to develop and you're, you're always going to be writing and changing as you write because your your writing is your thinking and so you you're you're using the writing for thinking so your ideas your initial insights are very useful your intuitive thinking is very useful 
but as it gets informed it might change to something a bit more um you know not necessarily better but but developed uh, and 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 thought and and so that's the possibility of something changing a lot and and that would happen again and again i think um so um that's where the free writing comes in in terms of getting your ideas uh out there on a piece of paper free writing five minute sessions uh stop extract from the fight from the writing another five minutes um that would be that would be very useful as well and you're you're developing a picture of um of of a a a, a good um way of looking at things so we I, I think we're probably a little bit pushed time so i'm going to move on a bit from that but free writing is covered in the book um it's very good for exploring ideas and i say i think moving on from a quick five minutes to 30 minute sessions is going to be very useful um and and so the idea of that of of you know from someone like peter elbow really in terms of writing for 40 minutes perhaps a bit like it's an exam after you've done a lot of um, informed reading and and thought about it uh, but not stopping for citation and not stopping too much for anything is is a way of writing and then extracting ideas and developing um thoughts phrases um and and, and in and developing your insight from an initial sort of feeling stage so um I am moving on to the analytical. I tried to go through this fairly quickly for you, but um, I'm, I'm going to move on to the um, analytical. Um, we're saying what was what's what is analytical? Somebody was asking that. Um, you know, this is my way of looking at it uh, uh, for for, re for for writing reflectively. So um, we're just going to cover that um, in in the. Um, so you know, would you would you would you consider using what theories or models in in a reflective assignment? And so we covered that a bit. So I'll, I'll, some um, things might go into the chat for that. I hope some ideas might go into the chat for any useful models or theories that you might use in you know reflective writing to build a theme because it could be a subject you know in itself I, I'm sure reflective writing could be a module or a course um, and you know what sort of theories or models would cover just about any every aspect of it or possibly academic pre-professional personally or what sort of models might cover uh, reflective writing I, I but we, we yeah so you can have a look at the um what analytical writing is in a minute and that's just a table read really to show how you might note down um, models theories or um begin to develop a theme from that there's a few um names that have been popped into the chat so there's gibbs cole rolf and someone else put driscoll's model yeah no those are, those, are, those are really good reflective models and i think that's i think that's one strand of what you have to write what you have to put into uh, uh one some names or citation that you have to put in a reflective assignment um to show that cycle that i was suggesting earlier on of your development but i'm suggesting that there might be um other um sort of theories that may link to what what yours what your particular take on or what your particular reflection is so that's the reflective model that gives you the the way of developing uh but what are you writing about what uh, you know what's what's your what's your subject in that cycle so you're you're placing yourself in that cycle is what i'm suggesting and um you know how, what are you developing or how are you developing as you're in that cycle so that cycle's essential to to you know to 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 represent and and indicate but i'm suggesting that you are part of that cycle and you're moving a subject through that cycle or you're moving a a, a a point of view an idea or a value or the way that you work or, or learn or, or or look at things through that cycle so that cycle is is, is necessary to, to to quote and talk about but um it's it's the background i think uh, uh, generally so are there, sorry, are there any other? Uh, that's an idea, but any any other any other um, answers there? 
not at the moment. <laughs> okay. No, um, the only other um, comment from, I, I think it's someone that um, teaches an academic possibly, um, who said that our level four and level five learners have covered these in the program and they're very good. And then they apply them through case study reflection from the workplace. So that sounds like a really good way around to do it. Yeah, so I think the case study work, the case studies might, yeah, they might need um, some augmentation or some ideas from, from the course maybe about, um, you know, about maybe linked to some learning outcomes about what the, um, uh, that the actual subject is or the actual viewpoint on something could is you know for this um just to to work out what the problem is and i suppose that's what i'm saying is you know what's the difficulty what's happening and to do that you might need some validation and so that's where the 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 analytical side comes in is the the definition or of of a of a difficulty that you're and, and that's all, you know, it could be the de definition of a, a possibility of building something or making something, but it's still going to be likely to something that's that's a challenge and has to be, you know, worked through. Um, so that's what I was thinking in terms of analytical in, in that to link linked perhaps towards con context, uh, te any technical terms to develop that. So. You know, having a, always in most of academic assignments, I would I would use this kind perhaps of of um, having have theories and um, looking at the definitions of theories as to what you know are they relevant? Can I link them to a theme, a subject theme, to help me with um, with my thing? So I'm just looking at I'm just going to read out this one as a sort of example, if I can. Um, I'm just having a bit of difficulty reading that, but. Um, if you can, if you can read that so so a group work narrative for example i mean a lot of students are asked to get in to to to, to, to work in groups and often they co comment or, or, or they're asked reflectively to write about their group work and um this one i just sort of made up really i suppose or, or i've considered that what a student might say in a situation uh that's that's um in terms of analysis of of the difficulty of their situation so um I considered working in groups would allow every member to make a valuable contribution. However, I felt one student organized and dominated proceedings and paired off with others to control the process of decision making. OK, so it might happen like that in a group if you're if you're unlucky. Not, not everyone in the group felt able to contribute and felt frustrated when a pair of voices influenced proceedings and others couldn't say anything. Uh, the main organizer. Uh, influenced and spoke for the group and this resulted in a lack of creativity so i suppose i'm going towards a, a, a definition and there of you know something that's a diff difficulty i mean maybe it's an extreme difficulty or or un, you know it may uh, hopefully it won't happen to you but um you know the the, 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 the the democratic group where every individual can speak is you know outlined using theory that something's not not really um happening the way it should perhaps you know that might be against your values or your your viewpoint uh, of the way something should happen or could happen and there might be writers that support that so the possibility is there to to develop a picture of um of a uh by analysis perhaps or of um in this case you know you defined a problem uh, of of the you know the, the problem solving ability of a group so so in that way you could be looking at you know personal expression um academic and professional development and and it's all at a group um group work level at a university so the possibilities there to, to cover all all the the you know development sort of ideas uh or development spheres that you're looking at so that's a possibility so that brings us on to you know the traditional stage of many um assignments anyway and that's the thing is there is a is, is the, the the reflective assignments um unless they're demarcated i would say as being different from um and, and um ordinary academic assignments um they they tend to tend to ask for a situation where something is going to be improved or develop or or you're going to have to put forward 
your um, development plan, whether it's personal, professional or academic. And so to do that, to validate that, you, you would normally naturally have to use an evaluation, which is always testing uh, a situation where you're testing a solution. Um, so in this one, for example, I'm saying um, the group rules needed to allow all individuals to contribute in this in this group work situation. Um, and the principle of every group member preparing a what if question was put forward. Um, and so you could you know find a writer for that. Um, and I'm saying at level four, level five, you know that you may not have to do it at this sort of level, but perhaps at masters it's possible to to reflect on a situation and analyze and uh, evaluate it. And I'm suggesting that so we could have what if situation. So this is an argument, if you like. I'm saying, what about a what if question? And somebody else says, no, we can have free group discussion and critical use of dialectic. If they, if you have the knowledge, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, yet somebody else might argue, no, perhaps that you can't uh, do that because not everyone has the social linguistic skills or rules, knows the rules to do it. So it's not it's a, it's a tricky situation. Um, so therefore, you know, you come to a solution that that you'd have to, you know, maybe you would have to give everyone a what if question at the end of the decision making process. So you can come to a, uh, the next time we meet, the next time we come to a decision in this group, we've we've made the decision. Everybody happy? OK, we're all happy. But as I say, this is a this is really a Quakers, uh, what the Quakers do anyway. Uh, or I, I believe that I understand that, that, you know, everybody happy with that? OK, well, everyone's got a what if question now. Everyone's going to ask a what if question about this. I hope you've all prepared one uh, or you can all think of one. And we're going to test it, test the test it. So so that's for a sort of group work um, idea to stop, stop, uh, you know, a certain number because everyone's got their point of everyone's got their idea and that's one area of evaluation in terms of testing a solution testing what can work and what can't work in a, you know for development and yes this is probably a bit uh you know quite a lot of work to do for reflection but it's the possibility to present what you're going to do better next time uh in a group for example and you can even evaluate you know the different um readers um the different writers um ideas at the same time as you're doing that if you, you know, there's a there's a there's another type of evaluation i suppose i'm saying is that um you can actually criticize one of the writers who've contributed or suggest how that you know that that their 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 writing can, is either useful or not and obviously it helps in an argument if you would say well you know this person's got a viewpoint but in the light of uh this information this other person has a better perspective and then you can show as Hazlitt would say your moment of learning um so you can actually move from criticism you know uh, as a evaluation as a form of criticism of a writer so in this case on, on this slide here we're just looking at somebody criticizing uh, one writer you know in in criticizing another writer and, and it's possible to find all the writers um who have ever written it or written something and the writers have written something about them i think on google scholar you could you could probably find that so you've got a depth of you know critical writing or a critical reflection i suppose because that's another thing that Another word that I do see used quite a lot, that's critical reflection. So so that covers that in the book it, it, or has a look at that in the book. And you can obviously um, think about what critical reflection could be uh, as, a, as a way of how that could go into your, your reflective writing. So that's the possibilities of reflective writing. Um, to, to you know develop your values uh, and see them put into place in this possibility and that's something for the chat so I'm thinking you know are there generic themes for this I know that we might be running out of time please tell me if I, I am and all that kind of thing but um so what kind of um generic themes could you suggest for 
for your lifelong learning experience or your subject um, experience. And, and, and that's that's the possibility as well. I think it could cover cover those. So we will we can come on to that. Um, but but what sort of themes? Is anyone suggesting any as any any themes there at all? We have current events suggested at the moment, and um, someone else has put group working. Group work. Um, I think I think people are having a think at the moment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good then. Group work and. Um, well, hopefully they haven't fallen asleep. They haven't think of not falling asleep. But um Yeah, they are coming through now. It's just um I suppose a more difficult question. So we've got um personal trauma as well. Personal trauma, one. yeah. Um, I mean yeah, I, I, that that's that's a possibility, I think, you know, applying that to to I haven't seen that in in um in uh, in um uh, you know that is I haven't seen that written and yet yeah, that would be a valid subject, I think. Yeah, in, in, we've yeah. also got um, sustainability um, and confidence written down. Um, yeah, self-esteem, self-esteem, confidence, sustainability. That's another one that would be really good, wouldn't it? You know, that if your values are, are are affected by that, I mean, that would be such a subject. I would have thought, and plenty to plenty of theory and analysis valuation to back that up. Yeah. That would be a good one. Um, so, so it's you know the, the the validation, you know, it's logic validation, exploring things about yourself, you know, exploring a trauma is and and working through it, because just the process of writing itself and uh, un, un disentangling um, words when you're editing sentences when you're editing, just that process of disentanglement when you're editing can often result in you having a process for disentangling other things in your in your life and your thinking and and can give you you know that discipline of disentangling allows you i think sometimes a lot of um space and thought and skill at untangling other things that uh, uh, that might be um raveled in your mind sort of thing Although good night's sleep obviously is good for that as well, according to Shakespeare. It's uh, good. So, um, so how, I'm just moving on to themes now. Then, um, oh, sorry, I've put the poll up. So, um, oh, there's a poll there. Sorry, I forgot yeah. about that. No, no worries. I'll, I'll just read out the question. Um, so which one of these themes could cover academic, professional or personal growth? And the, um, the options are time management, making a study plan, taking effective notes, uh, critical thinking and writing skills, prevarication, uh, i.e. the fact of avoiding telling the truth, um, attitude to learning and effective revision techniques. So the front runner at the moment is critical thinking and writing skills at 64%. Um, time management is sitting at about 25 and attitude to learning is about eight and the rest of them are all balancing on about two to four percent so I'll, I'll leave this on for another couple seconds just so that everyone has an opportunity to answer but um, yeah definitely looks like we've got a front runner in critical thinking and writing skills which is fair enough <laughs> Oh, that's good then. Yeah, that's that's something that I was thinking would would act as you know, and you'd find plenty of of theory and um, ideas on that to cover, yeah. you know, the powers of problem solving and, and um, prevarication. I can't remember actually writing the fact of avoiding telling the truth, but um, anyway, prevarication. Um, uh, I was thinking, yeah, I was just putting things off, <laughs> um, so rather than avoiding telling the truth, because I'm not sure what that means. But okay, so. Yeah, so um, these are the results here. So yeah, 57% yeah, uh, overwhelming favorite for critical thinking and writing skills. Um, and then second place is time management, 21%. Um, attitude to learning is 11%. Um, taking effective notes, 6%. Making a study plan, 1%. Uh, prevarication, 1%. And effective revision techniques is 2%. So great. Okay, so so those are all, you know, they're, all, they're going to be valid um areas for writing about in 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 reflection 
um, and how, you know, what sort of ideas you're going to develop for changing those or working those through. Um, and as I say, with the critical thinking skills, I've often seen people who could write uh, an assignment all the way through on, on critical thinking skills in terms of um, writing a report using using the skills that they're explaining about it in um, in evidence-based practice reports so they can say that they've got a personal develop, develop, development plan on what they want to improve and then um, apply that to, to a case study. So I think the idea of applying something to a case study, especially critical thinking skills, to a case study is going to be, you know, quite, quite good, quite, you know, quite important. Um, and so expressing that as a um, skill that you, you, you know, you know, you don't have or you want to learn about, um, and reflecting on on what you what you need to do, or what you need to know, uh, does cover once again the academic, professional, and personal skills when you're writing a, a, a case study report using those skills of decision making and uh, making analysis and and actually you're you're actually using the skills of analysis and evaluation um to show your decision making in a case which is what i mean by the case study report is you're looking at a case in say social work or forensic psychology and you're thinking can this um you know how do i show how do i show my decision making in this so so the reflection translates directly to i think um you're showing or your decision making skills as you as you might have to show to a court uh if you're um showing um if you're discussing social work or possibly um forensic psychology as well so so that's where the reflective skills can really be developed especially you know masters or later level to um in in terms of analysis and evaluation but you know at, at the at the starting point you're looking at time management critical writing fields thinking skills to, to 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 do that um so right starting there would be good they would cover all the bases as well i think i knew i'd say it in the end i knew i'd say i knew i'd come up with an americanism in the end i knew i'd say I'd cover all the bases I've never, I, I've, I haven't played baseball but i've played softball i quite like softball but anyway so um great thanks very much so i'll i'll, I'll move on um, then just julian just to let you know we're coming up to the q a section so yeah, if you could okay. um speed through the next slide so i want to, we do have quite a few questions that i want I'll to make sure i'll, I get I'll, speed, I'll speed through yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, i'm sorry about that i thought i thought i had too many so we're looking at generic themes there and these are some of the generic themes as well um that could be possible um the work study practice gap a regret you know it's a possibility that you could write about these sort of generic themes difficulties not knowing the rules are saying group work social and cultural pragmatics i'm calling that social interaction skills communication skills under under or overestimation of performance i think is quite an important one um and those are some examples so we're saying critical and right thinking skills in terms of you know knowing how to discuss things in groups um so that's analysis skills really problem solving in groups is really quite difficult i would imagine um i can't say i've solved that many problems in groups but anyway um communication skills team roles um misperceptions of performance that's something really to think about that's what's covered in the book in terms of how you might um might want to and there's some of the writers and models perhaps that you could or or sort of the writers really um writers ideas are, are on that some models as well um in terms of misperceptions of performance is quite a good one to look at um in terms of um how you might you know overcome the, you know feelings about a first grade um and how you might move on from that and you're you are part of the reflective cycle but certainly in the level four, level five, when you're starting off, you're looking at, um, you know, developing. And so in the experiential model, you're supposed to make mistakes is what we're suggesting there. So so that's that. So there's some uh, different ideas for, say, Belbin teamwork. Um, we had a question there. Have you have you 
overestimated or underestimated lost self-esteem as somebody was saying that's a great area for reflection you know to to look at what that means and how that would would change um julian i've actually made a poll for that so if anyone oh, okay, i just much. made it live so we can just see generally what the um, consensus seems to be like yeah that's great i'll just leave it on for a couple of seconds um overwhelmingly it seems to be i have at the moment 72 percent to about 25 percent so yeah it looks like yeah it looks like about 70 to 80 percent of of our participants would answer i have the remaining 20 but i haven't <laughs> I'll just leave it on for a couple more seconds if anyone else wants to answer but um yeah that seems to be the basic uh, here we go and here are the results as well yeah so 76 percent say i have and 24 percent say i haven't so well thanks very much that's 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 seems it seems like two two thirds more then and and yeah that's that's uh, i think that's you know everyone feels you know that sort of feeling i think of uh, the gap between uh, what you felt you'd achieved and what what actually happened and uh, it's something that we always come to terms with uh, everyone comes to terms with that uh, I see I see it doesn't get any better as you get older anyway um so there's a there's just some models that really that's a typical model that you know and and that's that's where you are in a reflective cycle really you know um sometimes and that's what the power of reflection can can help you with and, and develop and so you know you're learning you're getting better at things and um it's sort of the only way is up i suppose yeah so it might happen with your first first grade or or work assessment or situation like that um obviously the thing is to be going up and to to be to be surrounding yourself by people who are going up as well um if you're starting off something and you you know you don't want to be um be going down as, as it were or you know necessarily or being surrounded by people like that uh who might might talk the situation down so you want to always be um trying to 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 improve um and so reflective writing gives you that opportunity to explore the ways to do that and move forward um so um i think we, we got let's say better move on to the question and answers um as I said, general answer, what's your main conclusion when it comes to writing a reflective assignment? Or we could go to question and answers if you want to then. Um, but yeah, there's a, there, is a, there is a part in the book about improving the readability of your writing, sort of editing as well, um, you know, the general sort of ideas about that. Um, your main question or conclusion when it comes to writing, maybe, maybe you could put that in the question and answer as well um if or what what you think then so i hope uh, that's been um of benefit and thought provoking at least and interesting at least as well so um i suppose i i hand it over to jenny then for the question and answers okay great um i'm just going to stop your oh no i don't think i can could you stop sharing your um, yeah, slides yeah, so we can see yeah. see you a bit more zoomed in there yeah, perfect mm -hmm. okay so we have quite a few questions that people have been asking throughout the session so i'll just start at the top and work through um mm -hmm. so the first one is is reflective practice a continuous learning development skill yeah definitely continuous learning develops lifelong learning um skill i'd say if you you happen on a skill at, uh, you know, straight right at, the, right at the beginning, you can carry that on and get and just develop that because you never stop learning it. Uh, no, you know, improving on something. You know, imagine if it's any, you, you know, can imagine it from from anything, from sport, from a, from kicking a ball to um, to you know, uh, honing your um, emotional intelligence. You've always got the opportunity to keep to keep um, going with with a feature or something that you can you can work on. 
Um, got another one here, which is uh, how do you combine critical analysis with reflective writing? Yeah, I'm just saying um, the critical analysis, I think you can move that through um, a critical think, uh, crit critical thinking, critical writing. You can move that through to, to writing, uh, to defining a difficulty in a case study, for example, and ultimately um, showing a decision making process on what the best uh, decision is for a person in a court. Um, um, you know, and and so you know, reflecting is a possibility on on you know your on professional expertise. You could reflect on your own um, using that as a critical analysis. Um, but it, say in a, in your own personal learning experience, you're able to place yourself um, and and consider your own critical thinking and writing skills uh, and develop them um, from from and say so you don't have to develop it from a deficit model you don't have to, to see yourself as as a negative but you can see yourself on what you have to you know what what you could learn more about in terms of um you know uh understanding what an argument is and how to put forward an argument um how to how to make it how to make a decision and show a decision so you'd need to learn that maybe at, you know show that you can understand that at a theoretical level and then ev eventually that would apply to to you know obviously a professional situation but it, i'm saying it, it would cover that um if you can show or understand the structure of an argument for example so that would be the the way of uh analysis works in um to define something and you can show that you know you can give 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 something validation um as as a difficulty um but you're looking really just at a uh a, a, a crit a, as critical thinking or a critical writing skill and so you go to someone like Stella Cottrell to 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 work out how you can get better at that and um, and even how you can implement that in your writing for other subjects okay well, that's as well with the critical thinking, we have some really great past events um, that are um, great for watching for that. And we have one coming up next week that is um, a cr critical thinking uh, author um, who is also an academic. So we will be emailing everyone about that that's attended this event and has a ticket for this event. So, um, yeah, and I'm really excited about that event. I think it'll be a really good one. So, um, yeah, just to let everyone know. Um, so we have a question that I think Maria is, is actually typing an answer out to, but I'm going to ask it because I think some other people were interested in the answer too, which is um, who is targeted in this book? Is it students um, to help them write reflectively or faculty members to help them teach reflective writing to their students? Well, it is a, it's a sort of super, it's a super quick study skills book. And I think um, hopefully it's sort of for both really. In terms of if you're if you're setting something, you might want to uh, look at you know what sort of ideas are are out there in terms of um, uh, you know you might you might want to uh, um, look at that in terms of what sort of ideas are out there to to help um, students mm -hmm. um, and 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 I'm just writing uh, in terms of um, as I say, the, the, any anybody who's faced with a kitchen sink sort of a, a situation with, or feel that they're faced with it, with something that's um, quite difficult, and they 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 might get a sense of um, over, you know, being a bit overwhelmed. I don't think you need to be overwhelmed. You just ask, and you just um, you know find out. You ask people um, in your in your university. There's always people to help you. You know, figure these things out, but um, it's it's really to help students in that situation, I think, as well. I'm going to follow that on because we have two other questions that are probably linked to that um, from the same person. So um, they've asked, "Do you cover how to assess reflective writing in your book by faculty, peers, self?" And then the second question was um, for students, which level? So undergraduate, graduate, or doctoral? So I'm going to. Chuck them all at you at the same time. Yeah, I think um, I'm seeing what's happening. With my, I'm just going to have to plug my um, 
No, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to hide under the desk. I'm saying that everybody then is what I'm saying in that one. I say everybody. Um, in, uh, sorry, the question was that what is. Um... So the the first question was, do you cover how to assess reflective writing in your book, and is it by faculty, peers, or self? And then the second question was, for which level, undergrad, graduate, or doctoral? Well, I think it's 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 hopefully it's looking at level, um, the, the, you know, level four, level five, sorry, level level four and five. But it's really looking at that sort of level just to give them a structural idea of what could be in the book. I'm sort of plugging my computer into it, I said. And um, so it's giving them a sort of level, um, a basic sort of uh, overview, really, I would say, of um, reflective writing. Uh, and perhaps suggesting that there it's i would like to suggest that it's it's uh you know it's a subject and, and could could will or hopefully will develop generic themes um in terms of you know personal professional and academic development um so that in that respect um of it you know developing and 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 people thinking about themes that that you know could be applied in tutorials and things like that, uh, I would say then that it's for everybody. Just I have, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to really desperately unclick mute then and it was not happening. So yeah, I'll leave I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put energy into my computer at the moment. <laughs> it seems to be um, the, the it's not actually Te technical failure on all fronts. No, 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 well, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not actually firing up, sort of thing. But um, hopefully, I'll have enough energy to well, leave. Yes, to... We'll, we'll have to read out all the questions are extra fast just to get to. Well, all maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, shall I read the next one, Siddharth? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Go for okay. it. Okay. So I will read out. Ursula's question, who is, says, um, we have been discussing resilience and how we are excluding empathy if we become too resilient. Um, could that be a refle reflective piece? Yeah, I think so. I think resilience for me is, um, it's an organisational word, uh, it has become an organisational word. I'm not an expert on, on resilience, but I'm just saying it's an overused you know, sort of uh, word in the same way that enthusiasm became an overused word. And um, I think the misuse of words in organisations, but misuse of process in organisations is a key thing. As I say, the workplace practice gap is a possibility where resilience comes in. If you're being told to be resilient, when it just means get on with it and not show uh, a, yeah, not, not, should not, not have empathy or not have, um thoughts or feelings that that are valid and need uh air time or not or need to be aired should i say um in more in that respect yeah i think that i think you know the possibilities of subjects like that are, are are there um but once again if you were to write what i think what i think and what i feel without the validation from writers or ideas from writers then then it loses its meaning and 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 things lose their 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 power or their impact. So that's why I'm saying the analysis evaluation is necessary for you know really good ideas to 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 work like that. Um, so we've got one here about um, so in Rolf, what, so what, now what, then what questions? What, um, what would be mainly descriptive? Not very aware of Rolf, so I'm not sure if I. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I'm. I'm. I, what I'm aware of is I've got. A, I've got a exclamation mark on my computer now. Um. Uh. Oh no, it's right now. Good. Uh, so Rolf, if if what if if what so what so so uh, yeah if so so what um, well the descriptive part is the context really. You have to always to set the context in terms of the organisation, the, the what's happening you know, in the learning experience or learning environment. So I think the descriptive part is, you know, you can use description in analysis very well in, in terms of setting one piece of descriptive writing or fact or argument of fact and explanation. You can put one argument of fact and explanation or one 
thing about that against another or contrasting difference. So descriptive writing is very useful for putting different contrasting ideas into a situation. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, so, so that's a possibility. Um, and uh, so it'd be the beginning really um, uh, in a lot of description, but you can use description in evaluation or analytical writing to, to show contrast and to develop uh, uh, differences. So if you can develop differences, you can always explain things very well. Right, that's it, I'm, I've done it now. Uh -huh. I've got a, a power unit on the side of the computer that's not quite working well, but now it is. Well, we, we are down to the last question. So hopefully, <laughs> even if it does die out in the next few minutes, you should be OK. Um, yeah. I think this is actually a follow up to the questions about your book. Um, so this person just wants to know, and about assessment, do you share rubrics and best practices as well? Um, I, I see I rubrics. Um, I haven't I the, in terms of assignment requirements. I've sort of covered them in terms of um, what can be expected. I think I, I do that in the tutorial as, yeah, I do that, yes, that's definitely done. And what was the other one? One was rubrics and one was? Best practices. Best practices. Um, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I, I say what I consider to be the best way of doing a reflective assignment. Um, I, I just basically cover, you know, a generic uh, reflective assignment in an academic generic reflective assignment and and that's a good qu last question if that is the last question but that's a good question because i would say you always have to ask your 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 tutor so that's a great last question in terms of both aspects is you have to check your assignment requirements with your tutor in a tutorial um what you know i'm not saying tutors are idiosyncratic but they have different ways of doing things and so you check the rubric you check you you chat with a and you give them some uh, information about a sample, perhaps of what you're writing and what your theme is. So you can you know, put forward your theme. So that's a possibility. I'm going to sneak in some pre-submitted questions right at the end. So um, some of our attendees submitted the question while they were registering for the event. So I think I'll just um, sneak in a couple of those. Um, so the first one is what, um, that some from someone who works with trainee teachers who are extremely busy um, and they ask when and how would you suggest that they can reflect effectively on the quality of their teaching for, so um, some quick strategies that you could give them for a high return for efforts yeah okay I have got um, uh, an answer to that I prepared it earlier on and it's just over here but um I mean, obviously, time management is key to to um, to to those um, uh, teachers. I did. I've got. A, I'm just trying to get the the, the answer <laughs> up that I wrote up earlier on. You have to excuse me to that question, um, and it's not coming up. Uh, um, so um, I, I will get it up on here, though. So it's all right. No. But if you've if you've been put if you've put together answers to the pre-submitted questions, we can send them out um, oh, with okay. the follow-up email. That might be easy because then everyone can read them. Okay. Yeah. No. I I I I don't I don't want to sort of waffle and and um, try and remember what I and, and get it. Yeah, uh, that's fair enough. If you put yeah, effort into yeah, doing I, that, I, I then did, that's I all did. good. There are, there, are, there are a lot of questions there, and I did actually prepare for them, and it's just on this. Oh, <laughs> it is not our friend today, is it? <laughs> so. So that's a bit tricky, but um, um, anyway, you know, I mean, I, okay, um, well, we'll send those out with our follow up email and um, share that with all attendees so that they can see the answers to those as well. Yeah, okay. Um, we have had a few questions that have been asking about um, about so the video throughout the event, they've been asking about whether the um, event's recorded. It is being recorded, it's been live streamed to our YouTube page, and we will be sharing a link to the video after the event. So, don't worry, you will all be sent a link to that video and uh, we can also share the slides so we'll do that in a follow-up email as well they'll probably come on separate emails just because of the way that the attachments work so just keep an eye out for those and um, we'll also be there's a number of references that were used in this um, event so we will be sharing links to all of those books along with a link to Julian's book as well so um, don't worry all the information is coming to you. Um, so just keep an eye out. It's probably either tomorrow or Friday for an email from us. Okay, yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, I do have an answer. I do have the answers and I'll send those um, 
send those over Perfect. to you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Um, I think that that is it then. Thank you very much, Julian, yeah, for joining for us. Attending. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. That's great. Yes, thank and thank you for um, joining in on the chat because I think that that's just really helps keep it a really interactive event and it's it's so good to hear from all of you as well so thank you very much um so okay i think that that is everything i'm going to end the event now so we will disappear so um i'll just take the opportunity to say again thank you julian and thank, thank you maria you for all your help and thank you to everyone that's attended bye 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 everyone have a great day bye bye bye